Hey, this is not a spring chick, and this is our vlog for what was this? This is day this five. Is, this is day five from the Sundance Film Festival. Our day six from Sundance, and this was Monday. So this is the day after, after the weekend. So it's starting to quiet down. In fact, this was a popular day. People were either leaving this day or leaving tomorrow. Yeah, or a new crop of people are coming in because it's, I think it's documentary yeah. time. Well, yeah, okay, and a lot of the things that I went to, it's like they had finished yesterday, and okay, I wasn't aware that all of them were finishing yesterday, or they were finishing today. So, yeah, it was kind of like that transition period, but this was also the day where I hit my head on the door. Oh, God, she walked right into a door before we I left. Was, I was really tired. Which I put... I literally... In, we, we basically delayed. But what happened was we canceled something. She was going to go to it, and she started feeling better. I know. Well, I, I felt better after... Well, because it was like these were additional things that were put on me that would be good, um, but part of it was... Well, because she got back once again... Um, what is it? She we about, you know, hit the bed at about three o'clock in the morning, and then she's up five hours later. Yeah, and trying trying to go, and it's just that most well, it's just long days, and one of the things that makes it long is, is you're carrying this stuff all day long. Yeah. So it makes it longer because right there's I don't have a car to go ahead and put it in. You're walking up and down the hills all Even day. Even if you had a car, it wouldn't have made any difference because the cars are parked too far away. You have to take shuttles. Yeah. So you're still dropping your stuff off. But anyway, so this was, I, that's that was a great way to start the day off. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found out that one of these big time talent managers um, that I met the previous day was actually staying in our same hotel. Yeah. I, I was sad to believe it might have been because they were all courting the people from the film company. Mm -hmm. And for everybody, the, the, I think uh, Fox Searchlight ended up with the movie. Yeah. They were very happy about they that. They were very happy about that. Um, but the, my first stop after getting back into town was Muck Cafe at the Village. <laughs> yes, at the Village Left because there's something about fresh hot chocolate, caramel mocha, <laughs> they're making it just for you, oatmeal. Actually, I didn't like their oatmeal quite Because they were just so nice um, over there. But, and it was great. And then one of the things I was doing is I had heard that one of the suites or lounges was closing at 1 o'clock. So I was on my hunt for it. Because um, one of the ones was already closed. The other one... And see, here's the tricky part. is I don't even know which one it was. Because they're all in the same area. And unless they give you signage, you really don't know. Because most of them, it's, it's like a like a restaurant cafe, like half of it was a bar area. They have like chocolates and, and drinks and then they had some of the cast that were there doing interviews and they had Lemon and Express. So, you know, I went and visited. I didn't had no clue whose it was. Um, mm -hmm. So we were there briefly. Um, we can be, and then we went back over to Fender. <laughs> well, because we, you know, we knew Fender was still open. And it's relaxing music environment. Got the hair done, yes. A met makeup artist Isaac, who happens to be doing, yeah, the makeup. For, he's the go-to guy for the makeup there in Utah for film. So it was great. In fact, one of the I'm trying to one of the makeups he was using is actually a, a makeup company out of Japan, which I've interviewed before, which is extremely good. It's red. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's red, but it's only in like it's only in the, like a film. Resource source film makeup, so you're not gonna find it in your regular store. Um, so, let's see. Well, we did see Paul McCartney's son performing. See, this is the really cool part about it is he just happened to be there. Atmosphere, what about 50, 60 people up on stage? Paul McCartney's, yeah, yeah. Isn't isn't that just kind of sweet? Played what about five? Well, maybe about six songs. And then it was off to the next location. We went to um, these spirit hoods. Was, it was a place called College Fund. I'm trying to read it off of the picture. Um, they had these, and I actually met my other friends there. We had to take pictures because these spirit hoods are really just kind of fun. You might have seen them. They look like animals. We have all different animals, so you can 
be in the mood, show your spirit with all of these. So they're, they're a lot of fun. And then we went back to the Sundance Lounge. Going, what? Yeah, the Sundance Lounge. Um, let's see, which, which Sundance Lounge did we go to? I'm trying to think. Deep Channel. Oh, yeah, we did go to that one, too. Um, there's, there's a couple of different ones. One is Sundance Art Festival. Institute, Sun, Sundance Festival Lounge. Yeah, and then there was we the Sundance to. Channel. Wow. Yeah, and we had seen St. Regis Hotel. They had Timberland there. Bikini, Bikini Czar was there, and they asked Bikini Czar if they could go ahead and use her tip for being green. Yeah, on there. So next stop, of course, was the Stella Artois Chalice Factory. We had received these little coupon things the first day. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to carry these things the whole time so I hadn't stopped by. Well, guess what? They monogram on it and then they mail it to you, which means I could have gone there earlier. Yeah. But it gave you something that. to do, though. But they had Belgian waffles. Which is good for her. Yeah, and beer. Yeah, well, I passed on the beer, but I had the Belgian waffles. But they also had good beignets <laughs> at the opening night party. Yeah. So that was cool. Off to the Sundance Festival shop where I was looking at everything. There were many things that I would like to buy. Um, but as you can expect, the pricing was as you would expect from a festival, an event, etc. And <coughs> I decided we'd already had a few things that had Sundance on it. So instead of paying... $18, $20 for everything I wanted. I kind of passed on it, but went straight to the Sundance Channel headquarters where we were there for the Push Girls, which were having their, their preview party. Now, Push Girls, I didn't realize that one, my friend that was with me, she did not tell me until that day that she was actually in it. Hmm. I thought she was just friends of the people, and I knew she was friends, but she was in four episodes of it, of um, the other girl, which is Angela Rockwood, and basically it's it's to give inspiration. It's these, these girls that give inspiration to people, and they are in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. But they have their regular lives. And so um, they were there. We did a, a party. We did a preview. David Blaine, the magician, came over there. And <laughs> what? Like, he was still in the show. The four girls were in their wheelchairs, and he spreads himself out across the four girls. <laughs> and then does magic tricks for them. Yeah. Which they all loved. And then off to the D.C. delegation party. Yeah, this all did happen in one day. You see why they were long days? It's the last day for the majority of the performers. They're going to split entirely. Yeah. So this is, um, some people, is DC Delegation and I think 8112 Studios. Um, we went to their party at one of these private resort areas, Promontory or something. And there I saw the Igloutique, which I had seen before. And I decided not to because it was so far out of the way that during the day it's, Oh, it yeah. takes up too much of the time. But how was I to know? It's going to be right there next to mm, yeah. where we're having the party. I mean, the literally, fun. when you walk in, it's there, and then you take a right. But the funny thing is, if you look at it, it's just like it was a very hop, skip, and a jump from where we were staying. <laughs> Unfortunately, I it know. wasn't. It, I thought it was. It's like seven miles further than going to, uh, to pick you up in the town. It looks like it was because the exit... Was closer. It's just that you know, you know it's it just was on a the road shorter course. route from Sundance than what I had to go. Yeah. So I didn't pick her up there. Actually, I got invited to go to the dinner and I didn't take it because I didn't want to go through seven miles of I know. snow hill. Yeah. The food was very good. There wasn't enough of it, but what was there was very very good. And then off to the the movie called End of Love. This was finally a movie at Sundance. Okay, sorry, I wasn't really willing to stand out in the snow with snowstorms snowing for a couple of hours to get into a movie. Well, you found out if you don't have certain sets of tickets, you're really not going to get much of a chance to see a movie. No, and you're basically, you can go waitlist, but you're basically waiting that line in the snow for people not to show up. Oh, God, Eccles is really out. I mean, the, the downtown is in the snow. Eccles is way out in the snow. So there is, this is not a fun place to go see a movie. No, it's not, and especially if you have to sit there and wait. We lucked out because one of my other friends that had tickets, these are tickets that you could just walk in, although they still had to wait in line for a number, but we got in like half an hour before the movie started, so they had already started letting people in. Yeah. 
Because the, the back of the tickets all said you had to be there 15 minutes before the show yeah. starts or you lose your seat. Which is when they let it go to the waitlist people. Yeah. But fortunately for us, we were able just to walk in and see the movie. And we just happened to see the movie Baby Dog, um, End of Love, which happens to be um, Mark Weber, who was the same director we had seen right. the yeah. first day yeah. at the Jan Art Bertoli Soup Chalet, as well as the party that was up in the, gon on the gondola. No, imagine that. So we actually come to see that, and then there was this Q and A, which is really kind of cool. And then, of course, everybody's like wound up, not ready to go home. It's the last day. My friends are saying, "Can't you stay at Sundance longer?" I'm like, "No, I have to stay to go tomorrow." Well, come on, let's go party some more. I'm like, "Okay." And she did. <laughs> I did. Well, you know, I kind of forgot, and I went to go party some more. Um, I forgot that was like partying the night before when we were having a very long drive. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, at 3.30. my and, clue was that, okay, the weather's clear. But it was 3, and the snow, as I, I pointed out, it was snowing mm. very so, heavily. So we went over to Bing, um, to the Bing Bar. They actually had some really good bands earlier in the week. Drake was supposed to be performing next door at Skull Candy, and we got invited to a Drake's after party, but what happened was... When we were leaving Bing, where we played with the Connect, okay, um, Drake was so, had just gotten to his party that for him to be into the after party, you're not talking until at least another hour later. And we're just like, that is too long. So instead, I got a text message from another friend. We went to the party for Icono Class. It's I C O N O C L A S T S. And it was at the Grey Goose. Call it the Grey Goose Bar. It's, it's you know all these corporate sponsors. They sponsor each of the bars. Um, so we went in there. They had some fabulous music. We were dancing to. Had a great time. Getting ready to go home. At which time I said, I'm getting ready to go. Right. And then they proceeded to come and pick me up. And then the next text I said, Wait, going to another party. Except they didn't get that text. Mm mm. Mm hmm. Mm mm. Text is not the most reliable thing uh -huh. in the world. Phone so here's part of it is when you send a text, wait for a response. So anyway, we went to the party. My friend said, it's just on the way to work. We're going to drop you off. I'm like, really? Is it just on the way? Honestly, it's just on the way. 20 miles. Yeah. Just on the way up a mountaintop. And I when I mean up a mountaintop, it's like literally up 4.8 miles up a mountaintop to the top of the hill. I didn't realize it was going to be quite that far. Um, by the time we got there, the party had already died. The house was huge. It was like a spelling mansion up in the, the hills. Um, but it was, it was kind of crazy. So we stayed up there like maybe, what, 5, 10 minutes? Maybe 15. Oh, until somebody was getting unhappy about it. And then we went back down the hill. No, actually, we got up there, and it's like, the party's dead. And they're like, well, sorry, you got here kind of late. Because when we got there, we saw all these people leaving. Yeah. Yeah, so then it was back on down the hill. Thank God my ride was still sitting there waiting for me. Thank you, old Cam. <laughs> well, I told her I'd come and wait at the, that one spot and wouldn't budge. So. I know. Well, because it's a 30-minute in bad in good weather, it's no problem. Bad weather, it was snowing, so I, no. I would and, rather wait there than drive. And here's part of it is people are like, go, have them go meet you here because it's closer. I'm just like, you Well, know closer what? to them, not closer for me. I know, closer to, I'm like, no, that's okay. We'll just leave it here because we're from out of town. We don't know the area, and this is where we know. Well, we'll give it a mind to. I had to backtrack all the way to where I came back onto the Highway 40, then go to Highway 80 and go up another yeah. seven miles, which is, so, that's another 15 miles for me to go. Wow. So. It's like, you know, go the places that, you know, that's yeah. one of the things. It makes it a whole lot easier. But, you know, it's part of it is like the Sundance experience. I've lived to talk about it. And, and Lots of networking and you know what not to do next time which is understand there's park city and then there's park city yeah park city is a is a growing expanding young city and park city is a one street with very expensive <laughs> lodgings on both sides of it i mean a ski resort is but well, all the ski resorts are so many people they were staying in town and paying six hundred dollars but we know why 
Yeah. Because you can't walk to anybody when it starts snowing. Yeah. And you can't park. Snow one. So. so the best part is if you're planning on going to Sundance, be prepared either to, to drop the box and stay in town and plan early. Um, or if not, if you stay out of town, you are very stuck. Six to months live. early is a good time to plan, not the week or day before you're going to go. Because I, I knew people that did that. Yeah. And they still made it, and but they didn't get to stay quite as long as they would have liked to. Staying in Salt Lake City is also not a really intelligent idea. Yeah, we've had people before that have gone that stayed in Salt Lake and then take the shuttle in. But I'm sitting there thinking the shuttle stopped. Yeah. It's like... It stopped. It didn't run because of insurance problems. I mean, and then the road was... Um, the road to Salt Lake City was some of the worst snow in the area. Wow. So... It was bad, bad, bad. But it didn't happen. It was a Spielberg Lucas crew cast, you know, the uh, crew from Hugo that produced the greatest special effects feat in the history of mankind. Well, you know what? It truly was an experience. Yeah. Yeah. So whether you go to Sundance to watch films, to network, to party, actually, this or is to what watch stars, they're or watch okay. Stars. Well, what we we said what we liked was neat about it is they were actually walking down the street where you could mm -hmm. sit there and walk along talking with them. And you did have the opportunity in the venues, if you could get in the venues, um, in a small, relatively small one, to sit there and see acts. I know Paul Simon had played. They're like, Paul Simon was here at the Kino class. He said he was there yeah. like a couple hours before him. Well, like, a lot of people, a lot yeah. of major performers did show up yeah. because they, uh, they're there to have a good time. Yeah. And some of them actually brought ski equipment with them. <laughs> well, it would be. And, well, you know, a lot of them, they come in just for a day or two. Yeah, and then they're gone. And then they're gone. We were there. Um, because we wanted to cover um, what was happening, you know, basically the Sundance experience. Because I think Kirsten Bell was there to promote uh, her series on Showtime, and then she had to be in France to be with Craig Ferguson yeah. the next day to be his get oh. first guest on his first show in France. Oh. That That'd was a France. long time. That's a long for, time. Yeah. So she must have really been burnt out. She was had to have been fried going from Sundance, you know, go to get on an airplane, probably to Salt Lake City, fly across mm -hmm. the United States, fly to France, and then perform bright and cheerful. That's you got to hand it to them because I'm seeing part of it. It's like when they go across the carpet. Yes, they dress more more warmly than they typically do, but they're not wearing their heavy coats. Oh, I do like they. They said that uh, what was it? one of the people said that Richard Gere was there to promote a movie. Yeah. And they wanted Richard Gere, they, you know, his chauffeur was late. They just walked. And he said, he was born in Minnesota. <laughs> I know. I saw his, cho his chauffeur because I was sitting there. I saw the car. And I said, excuse me. I said, is this car available? He said, I'm sorry. It's reserved for Richard Gere. Yeah. And then he walked. He loved the snow. So did Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis dressed <laughs> for the snow. Bruce Willis is from Idaho. So this is, you're talking Richard Gerson and Bruce Willis. They both were snow people. So what are you going to do to guys that spent 30 part of their life shoveling snow? That they got two foot of snow. Oh God! Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Was fine for. It was nothing for them. They yeah. were fine. <laughs> the other people. Oh God! I want to go home. <laughs> oh God! We actually were expecting bad weather, so we were dressed. We just we didn't, had the clothes for the bad weather. And we did have chains for the car, but unfortunately, we didn't realize it. Didn't give a thought that California tires are not the same as. Utah tires, yeah. and got a lot of people have racing specs on their cars, and they were not really in good shape. Yeah, so you know, you live, you learn, yeah. the Sundance experience, so you can get in the spirit of it. So come join us for more, because we have the Sundance wrap-up of the whole festival, we've got some interviews, we've got reviews, all sorts of stuff, but this is our view, so thanks for joining us.